In this video, we're going to look at a mode of inheritance called codominance. And in this one, heterozygotes express both of the phenotypes of the homozygotes. So for instance, the big idea here is um, say we're going to use the letter F for feather color, B for black, and W for white. So if you have a black chicken, a homozygous black chicken, and a homozygous white chicken, if they were to breed together, the offspring, the heterozygotes, would have both black and white feathers. That's different than incomplete dominance. If we were following incomplete dominance, the offspring would be gray. But since it's co-dominance, you have both phenotypes completely and in their fullness expressed. A real-life example of co-dominance is sickle cell anemia. Now, in other writings or um, videos, you might see sickle cell anemia um, exhibited as a basic dominant recessive situation, but um, I'll explain here how it's a little both. Okay, so there is a gene that codes for the protein beta globin, and beta globin is one of the parts that make the quaternary protein hemoglobin that actually helps carry oxygen in your red blood cells. There are two alleles for this beta globin gene. There is um, HBA, which when it's functioning, it makes the normal beta globin protein. This is its notation, a beta with an A. And then HBS, which is the sickle allele, the allele for the sickle form of the beta globin, which is here. All right, B or beta superscript S. So there are three genotypes. If you have a normal, um, a homozygous normal individual, all the red blood cells will be that cute little red belly button shape that flow easily through the blood. And so cellularly, right, you're only making normal red blood cells. And on the outside in your whole body, you demonstrate the normal phenotype. So you don't have any symptoms of sickle cell anemia. If you are homozygous for the sickle cell allele, your cells, your red blood cells will be misshapen and they'll actually look kind of like a half moon or a sickle. This can cause clotting. Um, there are high levels of pain, yellowing of the eyes, fatigue. It's a situation called crisis. You, um, people with this need to go to the hospital and get blood transfusions. It's a very, very difficult, um, it's a challenging disease that's actually the result of just one single point mutation in this gene for beta globin. And so if you have that mutation, you're going to have cells shaped like this and you'll demonstrate those symptoms that I've discussed. However, if you're heterozygote, if you are a heterozygote and you're heterozygous for normal and sickle cell, then you're actually, your physical cells are, you're going to have both shapes. So some of your cells will be circular and nice and great at carrying oxygen. Others will be sickle shaped and, you know, it, they actually die earlier, the cells themselves, and, right, won't be able to carry oxygen. Um, but if you are just looking at that person walking around, they don't exhibit the symptoms of sickle cell and so you see them as normal. So on the cellular level, all right, there's co-dominance happening, all right? But when you're looking at the overall body phenotype, as far as symptoms of sickle cell that are shown, it's the normal phenotype that shows up. That's why some people say that normal is dominant to having sickle cell. In the big picture that's true, in the little cellular picture, it's actually codominant. So here are some Punnett squares to show the crosses um, and the genotypic and phenotypic ratios of organisms uh, that are products of those crosses. So if we have a parent 
who is normal for the beta globin gene and one that has sickle shaped, uh, I'm sorry, is homozygous for a sickle cell. And they mate, 100% of their offspring are going to be heterozygous and therefore 100% of their offspring will make both normal and sickle shaped shell sickle shaped cells and they will show the normal body phenotype having no symptoms of sickle cell anemia. Now if you cross two carriers we have right two heterozygotes here and they mate right their offspring have a 25% chance of being homozygous for normal and they will all have the regular red blood cell normal cells 50% uh, will be heterozygous, they'll produce both phenotypes cellularly, and 25% will be homozygous for sickle cell and will have the sickle-shaped malformed cells. And so cellularly, this is what we're going to see, but on the big picture outside their body, 75% um, will be normal, they will not exhibit the symptoms of sickle cell anemia, and 25% will. Sickle cell anemia, this is just a little sidebar, but true, is um, found primarily in peoples uh, of African descent and descent of other equatorial regions in the world. Because what's interesting is that sickle-shaped cells cannot carry, they cannot support the parasite that causes the disease malaria. So... If you have sickle-shaped sickle -shaped cells, you, you can't get malaria. And that's the number one killer in a lot of those areas. So, actually, having some sickle-shaped cells is a bonus for you. And if you watch the video on heterozygote advantage, that will explain that further.